thank you. Um, it's great to get to have you here today, and it's now my pleasure to introduce and, and for us to confer an honorary degree on the Honorable Randall Woodfin. Mayor Woodfin, would you join me at the front of the platform, please? <laughs> Randall L. Woodfin was sworn in as the 30th mayor of Birmingham, Alabama in November of 2017. <laughs> Guessing there's some Alabamans in the room. Throughout his career, Mayor Woodfin has worked in various positions for the city of Birmingham. Experience he brings to his role with a new vision, a new dedication, and a new energy to a city that is being reborn, a place where every citizen will have a right and an opportunity to work, to play, to grow to their fullest potential. Um, when um, Mayor Woodfin, uh, after he graduated from law school, entered into public service, he worked for the Division of Youth Services, the Birmingham City Council, the Jefferson City uh, Committee for Economic Opportunity. He became assistant city attorney. He gained a seat on the Birmingham School Board, and he sits still today on multiple boards of community organizations, all to make Birmingham a better city. I want to say, uh, this is not in the script, but SNHU is working very closely with the mayor and his team to do some of the most innovative programming in America around making opportunities and pathways for work and school available to low-income youth. This is a program that's getting national attention. People have said, this is the program to watch. And we have cities calling saying, how can we do in our city what you all are doing in Birmingham? It's an improbable pairing of uh, New England, a New Hampshire institution, and an Alabama city. But when we were down there, in this city, this city which is sacred ground in American history, this is the place of the 16th Street Baptist Church where four little ki girls were killed in 1963 in a racist bombing. This is that church that's across from a park. It is the park where the infamous sheriff uh, Bull O'Connor unleashed the dogs and unleashed the water cannons on peaceful marchers. This is a city that saw Martin Luther King preach and lead. This is an amazing city and it's having a rebirth under this amazingly talented mayor. This is his first trip to New Hampshire and I am honored to invite him to have him here. We are honored to work with you. It is with great pleasure. It is with great pleasure that we award you the degree of Doctorate of Public Service. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, graduates. I'm excited to be with you all this afternoon. We start first by thanking the trustees of this university, President LeBlanc. I'm from the South. We like to say LeBlanc. To the faculty and staff that are present, and all platform guests. But let me start by saying something very, very important today. Happy Mother's Day. I had a conversation with my mom this morning, and she says, what are you doing today? Why aren't you here with us? Of course, I had to explain that. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> but after our conversation, she says, baby, give them something they can chew on. So I'll, I'll leave you with a little something today. On behalf of my administration and your neighbors to the South, I am so honored to have the privilege to share this special day, day with you. To the educators in the house who have invested countless hours into the future of these graduates. To the family members who are present, moms, dads, brothers and sisters, children, grandmothers, grandfathers, big mama, first cousin, second cousin, third cousin, and, <laughs> and even play cousins who have stood by their side and provided support and encouragement during those tough days. And to those friends who were present, who have helped make those tough nights more tolerable with those late night turn up parties. I remember those too. And to the stars of the show, 
the graduates, who today marks not the culmination of your journey, but the beginning of your journey. To all of you, I want to say on behalf of all the people you see surrounded you, we are eternally grateful. Now this is the part, graduates, where I talk to you about how this is the first step in your achievement to your dreams. How your path to greatness has already been etched in stone. How when you throw out those caps and those gowns, the blessings will come raining down. But that's only partly true. You see, because while Southern New Hampshire University has helped you become the architects of your future, giving you the tool to build a path towards excellence, never forget what Langston Hughes told all of us. Life ain't no crystal stair. It's a lesson I learned very quickly in my own college career. You see, I'm a kid from Birmingham who would go on to graduate from Morehouse College in Atlanta before returning back to my hometown to explore public service. That path will eventually lead me to run for mayor of my city. The hometown kid made good on the road to bring change to a place I've known as home. But mere months before the election, my world was rocked when we received the news that my 17-year-old nephew was shot to death. My family was no stranger to this sort of headache because about five years prior to that terrible news, his father, my brother, was also taken from us at the age of 39. Both victims of gun violence, both unable to truly live up to their potential. My brother never made it to his 40th birthday celebration. My nephew never even made it to manhood. Both of their futures robbed and our family. Our family was left to pick up the pieces. You see, you have to understand that I come from a large, tight-knit family. My dad is one of six children, my mother is one of eight children, and I'm the third of four, and honestly, I can't count how many cousins I have. To lose my nephew so soon after losing my brother threatened to rip apart those still aching wounds that hadn't yet healed. I had to once again look into the eyes of my mother, a woman who had already wrestled with so much grief, knowing yet another nightmare was staring us in the face. Well, here's the deal, graduates. Why do I share such a moment on such a happy day for you? The truth is because many of you have had moments, hard moments, unhappy days to lead you to this day. And I want to tell you, just like you, what got me to this point, hope. Through my faith, hope. Through my family, hope. And yes, through the support of my community, hope. And that foundation was laid through my college career. So I want to explain that. You see, at Morehouse, I learned the principles of servant leadership. You see, traditional leadership focuses on the leader's ability to direct and grow an organization at large. But servant leadership, servant leadership focuses on the leader's ability to grow and uplift the people. It's all about how we empower a community. It was that very community that I worked so hard to empower who helped uplift me, who helped uplift my family through that very dark time. And eventually that same community, just a couple of months later, would elect me as mayor. And as I stand before you looking out, your community, your family, your children, your parents, your coworkers have supported you and uplifted you during the hard times you've had to get you to this point. Don't miss the lesson, graduates. The diploma that you have be handed today is very powerful. It's symbolic of the years of growth you've had and the knowledge you've absorbed. However, the real power is in those learned experiences, the long nights, the studying, the tears, the triumphs that will truly cause all of you to be a force to be reckoned with 
to be a force for the good of your individual community. My college career taught me service. It taught me I had a responsibility to uplift the community. And through that empowerment, and yes, through that servant leadership, that community would uplift me during my darkest hour. And here's what I've learned over the last 17 months as mayor of my hometown. Leadership is not dictatorship. Leadership is all about empowerment. And empowerment is a two-way street. Uplift your neighbor, because one day you may need to be uplifted as well. Graduates, I hope you realize that this journey is not just about you. It's about the lives you touch. As you look around this arena, a room full of family, a room full of support, there are other faces that you may have never personally interacted with, but have watched and are watching you. There are other faces that you may have never personally interacted with, but have learned and are learning from you. And there are faces you may have never personally interacted with, who have been inspired and you are inspiring them. True story. And so here's the deal. Maybe you'll dig deep into your communities, bringing change on a fundamental level in the vein of a Nipsey Hussle who lived by his motto of hustle and motivate. Maybe your personal stories of struggle will empower and inspire others like a Roxanne Gay whose words of truth pierce hearts and spurred action. No matter the path, graduates, and let me tell you, the path will be rocky sometimes. There is hope. And the reason there is hope, because you are hope. Challenges will come, but those challenges won't last because you're built of sterner and stronger stuff. The very fact that you are sitting in this gymnasium, sitting here, proves it. I see you with the glitter on your cap. I see you with your tassels. You're ready for the world because you've already been in the world. And your families and your friends and your communities, the world needs your fortitude. The world needs your strength. And here's why. Because healing starts with you. Activism starts with you. Reform starts with you. Restoration starts with you. Empowerment starts with you. And yes, compassion starts with you because we are all of our brothers and sister keepers. The formula for change is when ordinary people do extraordinary things. And for every problem in this world, with the degrees you are armed with today, you are now on the solutions end of addressing and solving those problems. And so to the graduates in this room, be the empowering force that our world needs. Thank you.